Today I'm gonna be showcasing the zombie hoop base. This is a cool op base where you can have fun competing with your friend while fighting the horde. I have a few variations that have a floating hoop and also a score indicator whenever you make a score. And the base may look all fun and games but they are very capable of uh, dealing with the end game horde. And with that being said, let's get started. To start the video let us do the fear evaluation so that you can get the general idea of how the base is performing against the endgame horde. Flexibility. Can we use all three types of weapons? The answer is yes. You can use all sorts of weapons, however, even though you can use guns, you cannot really do piercing headshots because of the positioning of the hoops or rings. And for that, uh, this base loses 1 point and scores 4 out of 5. Coming up to the next, effectiveness. We're looking into two factors, fight or AFK capabilities. This base is capable of doing both, although when going AFK, you have to do a little bit of repair during the horde night for it to work. So it's not 100% perfect AFK and for that it scores 4 out of 5. Accessibility, we're answering one question here. Can we build this base on day one? The answer is yes, the design itself can be built on day one very easily and uh, take on the horn. However, to actually play the game you need the stun button with stun repulsor mod. The game mod itself it's not gonna be possible until the mid game, hence the base scores 3 out of 5. Reliability. This base scores perfect score of 5 out of 5, having untouchable floating hoop. A pit hole that negates uh, zombie rage mode and a smart zombie path designs that throttle next zombie forces. Overall this base scores 4 out of 5 and of course the fun value is 5 star out of 5. Alright with that out of the way let us start with the simple version. I'm gonna show you how to build the simple version first and once you get the idea you can upgrade to the uh, next versions which I'm gonna be showcasing uh, soon. The simple version consists of uh, main body, the fighting area with two windows for both of the players to stand and the zombie path is wrapping around the body and the zombies will be coming up from the behind and when you are using the stun button you will be shooting the zombies to this uh, <laughs> very realistic looking zombie hoop and uh, of course the hoop is uh, actually floating initially I designed this hoop just a regular way having pole touching the ground but when I was testing the base the, the zombies went into rage mode and they started hitting the base of the hoop which I didn't like it so I used this trick that I learned watching cautious pancakes video that has invisible blocks which allows you to build somewhat uh, floating base which I'm gonna show you how to build soon. With the floating hoop, this is gonna be untouchable. A hoop is gonna be there indefinitely during the horde night. So there's nothing to worry about. And of course we have just a generic pit hole here to negate zombie rage mod. Regarding the path, I'm using vertical poles at the face of the base. This is also a little trick that I have used in this base. Uh, because, you know, the zombies are coming from both ways to give both players equal chance. If we use regular blocks in front, uh, it's gonna make the zombies to bunch up. If we put the vertical poles, uh, something like this, it's gonna thin down the zombies and uh, make it much easier to play the game. Now this is a very base design and it has a few flaws in there. For example, the pit hole. As you guys can see, it has only one stairs coming up, which means it's gonna give the player one uh, advantage of uh, having more zombies to chance to score because the zombies will be coming up from this direction and they will choose this path because it's the path of least resistance and the shortest path. This basic design I wanted to show you guys just to present the main idea but the upcoming versions uh, we have resolved that issue. It is giving the both players equal chances so we're gonna get to that very soon. Alright, to build the space, let us start with the main body. The main body is 6x6 six six and uh, 5 blocks high. And let us fill the inside completely as well for more structural stability. After finishing the main body, let us uh, start building the base and wall of the base. It's gonna be 4 blocks high. And let's build the front section as well with the leaving two windows open and we're gonna make the entrance at the back of the base you know the zombies are coming around I don't think it's a good idea to make a entrance hole at the sides the uh, 
spider zombos might jump in or the cops might puke through so only one entrance from the back uh, we can close off the roof like this or you can place uh, frame blocks or bars or scaffolding blocks to shoot at the zombie birds but don't forget to leave a hole right there to have access to the rooftop maybe put some traps to deal with the birds or you know do some repairs and the main body is uh, basically done now let us uh, start building the path of the base uh, for that let's build the pillar five blocks high on the side right at the edge of the base let's extend to this direction with the face of the base let's go and switch to poles and we are going to be using this pillar centered pole right here connect it to the face uh, build the path up until the other end of the base and let us build the support pillar here you can really build the stairway any to any possible directions you can build the sideways or the back or you can even heck uh, make a uh, stairs from here to this it, it doesn't really matter but uh, i think if we build the stairs to the back it, it kind of looks uh, neat the pathway is done from one side and we gotta just do the same exact on the other side uh, let us copy this block i mean i really like uh, they introduced uh, this copy shape and rotation both at the same time we don't have to find the exact orientation all over again you know there you go the uh Base of the base, the main body and the path is done. Now let us start making the hoop. I have found out that the perfect distance of the hoop has to be 5 blocks away from the base. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we are going to be making the hoop at the start of the 5th block. So with that in mind, let us start building the hoop here. Measure our 5 blocks distance. And let's put the two blocks here to raise the pole from the ground. Uh, later on, we're going to be connecting that with the uh, main body of the base with the invisible block to make it uh, float. And here I'm just using a regular pole. One, two, three. This is going to be the level with the zombie path. Regarding the hoop itself, I am using the window arc trim. In the trim category this one you can use this regular arc trim but i found out that they have a different interaction with the zombies when you are building your hoop with this block for some reason when the zombies you know fly into the hoop uh, they don't interact with this uh, variation they just fly through it it was kind of really hard to tell if you have actually scored or not but with the arc window trim version right here, the zombies were interacting. So it, it was kind of easier to tell if the zombie is falling into it or flowing over it. So let us use the window arc trim. Correct the orientation here. There we go. There. That's good. There. All right, let us connect this hoop with the main body with the invisible block. Let's go to shapes menu and catwalk category. This is a catwalk version 2 double double end, which again I learned from watching Cautious Pancakes video. For some reason, when you place this block like this, stack on top of each other, the middle section just disappears. I don't know if it's actual glitch or not, but we can use this feature here. So the exact orientation is going to be one of the fences facing to the main body. The other one is facing the other way. So let's extend here. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. The zombies will not be able to interact with the invisible blocks and we can also pass through it freely. And in order to make it more structurally stable, let's build another one on the other side. And also connect the bottom as well. Now the hoop is being supported by four invisible rows of blocks connected to the main body. We can now take off these uh, building cubes. And we have a <laughs> floating hoop. Now. Uh, this simple version has just plates here but i found out that you know even though it looks kind of realistic but uh, don't use these plates as a backboard when i was testing the zombies would actually fall here in this gap and they stay here and then they started to you know start hitting the 
poop itself, so I did not really like that. In order to prevent that, I highly suggest a plate arched in the square section. There we go, let's place here. There. This is gonna catch the zombies very easily and uh, they will not interact with anything when they are falling down. And uh, that's pretty much it man, the main body of the base is done. And of course you can start digging the ground and start making the pit hole. The size of the pit hole doesn't really matter, it's just up to you. Just make sure to dig down 10 blocks deep. This exact setup here will cost you around 323 blocks. So approximately 400 blocks will do the job. Alright, with the simple base explained, let us uh, go into the a little bit more sophisticated <laughs> versions. This one has a score indicator. Placement of the hoop is now vertical. I guess you can call this a zombie ring or something. But uh, this makes the game a little bit more challenging. And the light actually turns on whenever you score. With this version, the hoop is not really floating, but this tunnel building right here was uh, necessary to build the score indicator. Uh, we have a sensor inside, so whenever zombies falling down, it will sense the zombies. And then the zombies can drop here. If they don't die, they can just loop around. And I have actually resolved this issue in the third version. As you guys can see, this is now... 100% floating with the in the middle of the pit hole. I'm gonna also show you how to build this. But yeah, this is a fun little version. Note that I can fit in two blocks inside. This plate is actually occupying block space right here, but you know, it's facing in towards to the body. Uh, this is necessary because uh, if you place the plate like this facing inside, then it's not gonna be possible to uh, put down the motion sensor inside it which is why the uh, plates should be placed outside like this when you are building this exact setup and also i made the backboard to catch the zombies and uh, guide them through the hole which you know again <laughs> it's gonna get sensed by the motion sensor you can craft or buy the motion sensor from the traders and also i'm using a battery bank here and the basic light bulb, this is also very easily crafted in the workbenches. And in order to connect these, start from the battery bank and then go to the motion sensor. And then connect the motion sensor to the light bulbs, both of them. And then press E to interact with the motion sensor. Go into the options, select zombies as a target, unselect the other three. Power delay should be instant and power duration should be triggered. As we can see, the view of the motion sensor is limited by the tunnel. That is why we are building tunnel before we setting up a motion sensor. If we leave the motion sensor open, then it's gonna pick up a zombie just running along the field, making it not work properly. And of course, I made the pit hole a little bit bigger and I also made the staircase on both sides. This is gonna make the zombos choose to go up from both sides. It's just gonna make equal chances for both players in terms of having shot at the zombie hoop. All right, finally, the, this uh, third version is a bit uh, over-engineered and uh, it's a bit more overkill. Not only this has a fighting section, but this also have a living section here as well and i have expanded these stairs and made it kind of like a pyramid style for more structural stability when we enter the base it has everything in the hallway i'm using these support pillars to put the workbenches up on top we have every workbench the workbench came station mixer fire forge and also one storage box and further we go we enter the main playing area <laughs> we have a water source here and some other decorations and the two window which the two players are gonna be standing and having the competition all right now let me show you how to build this uh, floating hoop right here this hoop is being supported from all four directions uh, this side is being connected here this side is being connected there and also this one there and the front of the hoop is being connected to the main body as well first make the outer line of the pit hole and let us Make the border of the pit hole. There we go. Let's go to catwalks and select the double double.
Yep, this should be fine. Five blocks. And here as well. Now let's dig the ground one block deep. There we go. Let's rotate this. There, this is going to be the two sides and let's do the back. And we can also dig in the front as well and connect it to the main body. Let's put two blocks here. Yep. All right, now let's dig one more block deep and do the same again. Let's put some foundation here and connect more invisible blocks and on the sides as well. There we go. Now our floating hoop in the midair is kind of complete. Shapes menu and select the plate. Let's go to advanced rotation. And make the sides like this. On this side as well. And on the back. Just build on top of this uh, invisible fence block. There we go. And let's destroy this initial hoop. Oh, not that. Let's close off the front section. Now let us uh, make the hoop. That's one, two, three, four. Now let us make the backboard. Let's copy this. Put this here. And let us uh, select a little bit different plate shape. We're gonna go with the plate quarter round outside. There you go, and let's rotate. Now we can place down a sensor here on the second block to the top. And we can put down the basic light bulbs here. Let's place down our battery bank. Put one battery in. And let's connect the battery with the sensor. And the sensor with the light bulbs. And let's go to the options. Deselect everything and only leave the triggered uh, zombies and leave the rest and then turn in the power. Very cool. Now the sensor should be working. Let's uh, target self. Let's go down. Yep. Now we can, you know, start uh, destroying the ground and make the pit hole deeper. And the hoop is going to be floating like this. All right, anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow the channel for more 7 days to die. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Have a great day. And peace.